You're listening to Twist of Insanity. I'm Kitty. And I'm Kelly. And this is episode 11. This podcast is hosted by truly horrible individuals. It contains vulgar language and the discussion of horrific and sinful topics. Quite frankly, it's not appropriate for anyone. I want to stick my dick so deep inside you I can see it at the back of your throat. Honestly, like the messages have been lacking over the last week, but that's the only somewhat gross one I got. Usually, like I can pick between like three or five, you know, three to five shitty messages, but this was it. This was the only one this week. I like how they they flatter themselves. They can get their dick that far up. I don't want a big dick if that's what it's going to do. Like, I don't want to be split like a fucking chicken wishbone. I was... In college, I was discussing with a black friend because we were, I don't know, we were talking about like white dicks versus black dicks and like dick size. And uh, she basically said she liked black, she likes black dicks because it's like she said, what she said was 11 inches straight into your guts. And I was oh like, God. Uh, you know, I don't think I'll ever have a big dick. That, that, that has ruined everything for me. Just the fact, I just pictured a dick. Just destroying Pissing everything, going her belly straight into the guts and the like. Inside. I couldn't do like a dick any like that big. There's no fucking way. Yeah, no, I, I, I wouldn't want to either. Average dick, that's fine. A little bigger than average, uh, all right. More lube, anything bigger than that. Oh no. And be careful if you're like pounding. <laughs> but yeah, super, super big. Yeah, no, I'm good. I, I will die. I can give a a funny story for the ladies. This will probably creep out the guys a little bit. But let's just say me and someone were going at it. And uh, I started getting really bad burning in my ovaries. So we had to stop. And, like, I went to the doctor and had to get, like, scanned. And I was really fucking scared because I'd never had that kind of pain with sex before. And, uh, you know, it's not the good pain either. And uh, that's how they found out I had a bunch of ovarian cysts. Yeah, so if ever you get pain in your ovaries while you're having sex, girls, please check your ovaries. Because I I think I had like 13 in one ovary and like 12 in the other. Maybe get them checked no matter what. Yeah, get them checked no matter what. I haven't done that. Especially if you're going at it and suddenly your ovaries hurt. (laughs) Yeah, especially if there seems to be issues. Uh, Sex problems. Dun, dun, dun. I find like as you get older, sex gets more complicated. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm still sort of young, but yeah, I don't know. It's just sex. <laughs> I like I I like feel young until I remember how I behaved when I was like you know late teens, early twenties. Okay, I I don't know where I was a bit of a slut for women. Mm, I feel like I've been in a long time relationship for a while now, so it's like. Yeah, you can't really say, you know, all those gangbangs and stuff. I don't think Alex would approve. Yeah, like, we're just, you know, we're, we've are we been in long-time relationships, so communication's pretty easy. Yeah. I think sex goes wrong when there's not, like, tons of communication, which is what usually happens if you're, like, having one-night stands or, like, just the casual hookups or a new relationship. Yeah, you see, I'm going through that dating thing, right? So, <laughs> yeah. and I my last relationship like it was 12 years so i've i've kind of forgotten how to date and i'm so impatient with new people like you forget right because you get comfortable with your whatever and then you end up uh single again and you're and you're learning to date and it's very strange yeah it's almost like you want to skip all the like sort of awkward beginning relationship stuff yeah, because you've forgotten about it. You've forgotten how it was when you were starting out. Yeah, because it, it takes a long time to build, like, really good relationships. It doesn't just happen, like, bam, okay, you're good. Like, it takes a while to, like, work And you on both it. have to work at it. But I feel like I've become less patient as I have grown. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like, ugh, I've just zero tolerance for bullshit. Oh, by the way, guys, we don't have webcams this week. It's my fault. Uh, there's like a crazy storm here right now. It's calmed down a little, so we are recording right now. 
Uh, but there was like tornado warnings earlier and uh, I just <laughs> never had the opportunity to actually shower and I needed to look nice for my ad read because uh, it's basically I need to look, you know, a certain way for the camera. So I couldn't do that. So I, I we just we, well, I can't do the camera anyways because I look like shit. And I don't know. Hopefully the storm lays off, though. You might hear thunder in the background, uh, but it seems OK for now. Yeah, I was supposed to say that at the beginning of the podcast, but I uh, was kind of rejoicing in the fact that it's Kelly's internet that is shit today. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully this sounds good. Her signal's dropping a little bit every now and again, but we wanted to record today regardless. Yeah. But there, there should be cameras next week as long as Kelly doesn't get hit with a tornado. Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> I, I, I text, I nearly tweeted that video. Uh, she she texted me. I said, you know, how's everything going? Are you ready? Because we always like touch base with each other before we record. And uh, she just replied with this video. And she's like, fuck, it's happening. And she opens her back doors and the sirens are going. Like, you know, the thunder and rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did tweet it for a little while. And then the, the sirens went off really quick. I think they like fucked up and put them on too soon when it was really just a severe thunderstorm warning uh, there was no tornado oh. so well, there wasn't even a tornado I, those warning sirens There's a watch. scared the shit out of me because like in england they're the air raid sirens right i mean obviously we've not been at war for you know for a long time but uh those, those are what we equate them to and when i was <laughs> i'd moved over to the u.s and i was in hawaii and uh, husband was deployed at the time so i oh no he wasn't he was on watch that's it so he wasn't there that night and at like 4.40 in the morning, I get woken up by these fucking air raid sirens, like in my head. And it's like 4.30 in the morning, I'm half asleep. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And uh, so I was like, okay, in America, they say like, turn the TV on, check your cell phone, all of this. So turn the TV on and they're like, tsunami incoming. Oh I'm shit. I'm like, fuck, what the fuck's a tsunami? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like on Google, like looking up what a fucking tsunami is. <clears throat> Cause you know, not really, we don't really have them in England and I was fairly new to the US. Uh, and you know, it was like all grocery stores will be opening at like 6 a.m get yourself ready, prepare to lose power, all of this. Now, we, we lived somewhat high up in Oahu. We lived in a town called Mililani, which is kind of in the middle of the island, so it's pretty much the safest place to be. But I, I had no idea what to expect. Yeah, that is scary. I, when I was in Hawaii, we were just getting... We were at the airport waiting, and then, like, uh, North Korea issued a threat that they were going to nuke the U.S., which it's North oh Korea, whatever. But I was like, shit, I'm like the closest fucking state right now to North Korea. <laughs> so it was a little weird, but it, it, nothing happened, obviously. Yeah, we had nothing happen. But what was really weird is like you could see they webcam the other islands, right? So you could see like the bay in the big island and you could see the water kind of drain. And I'm thinking, shit, this is going to be really fucking big. Yeah, that's um, really and then scary. I guess something happened and it never like went off. I, I guess the volcanic something, the scientists explained it. But anyway, we didn't get hit, but I almost crapped my pants. I would be terrified. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I had, there was one tsunami warning when I was there, but it was like, um, they issued it right away and they said, but wait, this isn't like, it was a watch, I think, not even a warning. It was like, a, okay, it might become a warning, but we don't think it's going to go by this area. And then it didn't. So it was never a big deal. There were no warning or like um, sirens or anything. Because that ended up going like a completely different direction, the water or whatever. However, yeah, this it works. one, they, they set the alert at like, I don't know, 4.45 in the morning, 4.30, somewhere around there. And it, but it wasn't due to hit till 11.45. Yeah. Um, I may be wrong, but it may have been the tail end of the the Japanese tsunami mm -hmm. that was coming back. I don't know. I can't remember. But, I mean, it was a big deal. Like, they were opening all the stores crazy early so everyone would have time to get, you know, supplies and things like that. Did you get supplies? Yeah, they uh, they rationed all the water and everything because um, like where we lived the power would go out somewhat frequently anyway uh so the chances of us having power if a tsunami hit was was very mm. slim so just things like batteries and water and things like that we we had already uh been to the grocery store so we were pretty much set but we we did uh it was very, the the faucet water, tap water in Hawaii was disgusting. So we always had to filter our water or um, 
get bottled water anyway yeah. so oh shit but yeah <laughs> no webcams weather mother nature took over but that's okay yeah it's you nice. get to see us next week i get to just be like a complete slob right now yeah you guys really missed out on my kind of super deep hollow bags blackish <laughs> eyes after not much sleep today's been really busy ma'am really what's going on well the water heater burst over the weekend uh well what happened first was the the pressure valve on the water heater broke so it wouldn't warm up any water so replaced the valve that didn't work so it leaked again everywhere so yeah. two floods in then we replaced it with a new hot water heater that happened to be faulty so now a third flood in of that course. area and then we replaced it with another one of a different make that was fine and so three fine floods, for now three days uh <laughs> lots of mop buckets dehumidifier going over time closed to etsy shop because it's going to take like three days to dry out and then another two or three days of my OCD disinfecting. I mean, it wasn't the kitchen, but it was the shipping room and storage area. Yeah. And you know how OCD and paranoid I am. So I literally have disinfectant coming from England because I don't trust the American ones. They don't <laughs> smell as good. Okay. Well, I good luck. I hope <laughs> it doesn't fucking flood anymore. Hopefully now you, like, it's good. It's good. Yeah, yeah. We have hot water, but two days no hot water. And then today was just really busy, like getting the last orders out that were placed before the flood. Uh, you know, I cancelled everyone who needed a product made, refunded them. And anyone who thought, you know, I already had in stock in a dry area, then that still went out. But I didn't have my shipping room. So it was kind of ghetto rigging, you know, the, the items to get them out. But what a nightmare yeah that's that's gross that's i felt really bad because like one of my repeat customers who's like addicted to my bath bombs i literally had to say i am so sorry i have to cancel your order and refund you i cannot fulfill it because uh, with bath bombs you can't even make them even if i cleaned you know the kitchen which is pretty isn't clean it like anyway. a temperature thing it's a humidity thing uh. So normally when I'm making bath bombs, because Georgia is so humid, I'll run a dehumidifier. But that's obviously being used in mm -hmm. the floods area. <laughs> in the flood zone. The flood zone. This is how I live now. Next week will be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it has to be. There's nothing can this fucking week. happen next week. God damn it. Please, nothing happens. So we can just use webcam oh, from no. now on like we had been doing. Yeah, it was. I enjoyed it anyway. Although I don't enjoy how expressive my face is and I forget how much I use my hands to talk. <laughs> you know what my issue is? Okay, so like whatever. I said like my glasses were broken, they're crooked. It's not my fucking glasses. It's me. I'm the thing that's crooked. <laughs> I could have told you that. But are your glasses not broken as well? Um, they are. Well, yeah, they were broken, but they're not that crooked. Um, it's like a combination of that. My monitor is slightly um, tilted, uh, turned. I don't know, at like an angle so that it fits on my desk so that I can have two monitors and then I have one on top, but that one's straight. Uh, it's so I have to sort of turn to face the camera, but also I have like, this is so basic, but like 7% scoliosis. So like sometimes I think I'm like straight, but I'm not. And so it makes it we weird just need for to, me. You, you need to get a corset for podcasts and just crank that scoliosis straight. <laughs> yeah, I should try that. <laughs> But yeah, that That's bothers my me so much sometimes said. when I'm editing and I'm like, fuck, I look so crooked. Oh, it just <laughs> looks like my whole face is like, <sighs> but if you look at my eyebrows, you can see the angle. Uh, it doesn't matter. No one probably it's even It's much cares. more fun to just mock you for having crooked oh, glasses. No, I should have never said anything because now they're like, well, you know, actually I made an eye appointment. They haven't called me back yet. They better call me back because I just want new shit. I'm due for an uh, optician's appointment, and, like, there's no one here beyond, like, Walmart. <laughs> oh, I've been, I've done the Walmart ones before. They're, like, I mean, it really depends if there's a good doctor there. I had a really good doctor at a Walmart one, but then I followed them to their next, like, practice. Having been to my Walmart this week, uh, you know, I don't go very often, but I visited this week. I looked in there and I highly suspect that it lacks a good doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Mm, yeah, you're right. So like I don't really, know what I'm really going to do. Like, I'm in a rural area, but we're really close. Well, you're... Ha- I don't know. You have a bunch of stuff near you. Yeah. Know? That's a thing. Like, our bunch of stuff near us is half an hour away. Yeah, so... You're gonna... Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Because uh, I broke my glasses, which I'm supposed to wear, like, every time I'm reading or doing anything in front of a computer. But as you can tell, I don't. And uh, the other day, I put them on because, like, my eyes were really hurting and they don't work for me anymore. <laughs> I'm like, whoops. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I I haven't been to the eye doctor, I want to say, like, at least three years, but maybe five. I don't feel like my vision's gotten that worse. I know last time I went, it had actually gotten better, if that's even possible. Oh, actually, I think only one eye got better. I hadn't really noticed a problem until, like, I was playing Magic Online, and I was struggling to read the cards. Because normally you're reading you know, just normal text on a website or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I hadn't really noticed a difference. But when I was trying to read the cards on Magic Online, for me, they appeared blurred. And I was like, "Uh (laughs) (laughs) uh-oh. Yeah, that's not good. (laughs) I was like, shit. I guess nothing had really challenged the eyesight until then. So I do need to go and get it sorted. But craziness. The eye doctor is not too bad. It's like... I don't know how much they are. How much? Um, I don't think it's... Well, I mean, glasses and, and contact lenses are, are pretty expensive. I am not putting shit on my eyeballs. There is no way anyone's ever going to get me wearing Really? Contacts. It's really not that bad. Fuck that. No, it's no, not bad. No, I cry like a baby if I poke myself in the eye. I am not putting shit on my eyeballs. That freaks me the fuck out. <laughs> like, it's like that eyeball licking. Like, that's real. We people were linking us and like i googled it and there's like videos on youtube of eyeball yeah i looked i read an article so it's really it was really big in japan or there was like a little trend where everyone was like oh let's lick each other's eyeballs um and they pretty much just warned against it like don't lick each other's eyeballs i wonder why because like i um when the trend happened in japan eye infections were going up which obviously you don't want a fucking eye infection so just don't do it just don't lick other people's eyeballs you gross fucks I can just see it on a dating website. I like uh, long walks on the beach, evenings with Netflix, and uh, eyeball licking. God, I just pictured, like, because you said beaches first. I just pictured someone, like, putting sand in someone's eyes and then, like, licking it out. Licking it out. Oh, <laughs> oh to, like, combine two horrible things that never needed to be combined. Oh. <laughs> Fuck sand. We've already talked about fuck sand before, though. So. It's the best na- nature's lubricant. Oh. Fuck sand. <laughs> Fucking sand, man. Spice it up with a dash of Tabasco. Oh. <laughs> so bad. I apologize to all viewers if this episode. They're just holding their eyeballs now, like crying. I wonder if anyone will get their eye- eyeballs licked. Just to see what it's like. I wonder if, they, yeah, I wonder if there's going to be at least one person. If you guys do it, just be honest with us. Make like a throwaway account if your real name's attached to your YouTube account. Or, I mean, a lot of people listen on iTunes, so. Kelly, you got to see if Alex will let you lick No, I'm eyeball. not licking. I'm not licking eyeballs. He's not licking my eyeballs. No one's licking any fucking eyeballs, Kitty. Unless it's you. If you want to take the fucking damage, go for it. God, no, no. No one's getting... I can't even put a contact lens in my eyeball. Do you really think I'm going to let someone... You need to face your fears and just have someone lick no, it. A big no, old lick. No. Fuck that. No. No, I'm sticking to glasses and eyeball licking shields. Oh, what if you slurped the eye out? <laughs> like... <laughs> and then, like, it just pulled the brain out. It's just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. That's what they did in ancient Egypt to mummify... Uh, the, the, actually, they go through the nose. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, what if they modified a straw to, like, eye size? Oh. oh. <laughs> this, this is getting so gross. <laughs> Digging oh, this guts. Is why we, shouldn't, we shouldn't be allowed to do this. Slurping like, brains podcast. out through the eye. And up the nose. Have you ever ate an eyeball? No. I have. Well, not <laughs> really. What type of eyeball uh, yeah. was it? Like a small child? Uh, or? Well, yeah. No, uh, it was it was just a lobster eyeball. Actually, maybe I no, I didn't. I think I was going to, but then I didn't. I think Alex did it. 
before I me. I ate and I... a prawns eyeball once, but I don't think it really counts. That's shrimp to you Americans. Mm, okay, yeah, no. That was a dare when I was about seven. Ugh. Mm. Yeah, we need it. Just it was crunchy. Oh yeah, that's what Alex said about the lo- the lobster eyeball. It was crunchy and like sandy. <laughs> oh, but, that's uh, sand again. I like retch a little. Like when you see like Anthony Bourdain or whoever it is doing those travel shows, and they'll mm. eat like a goat's eye. The worst one I saw is when he he drank a bunch of blood, and it, it was like maybe cow's blood or something. Oh in like africa nasty i think anything blood related is is just gross i mean i know a lot of brits eat like black pudding for breakfast which is like dried out and fried pig's blood mm, yeah Ugh. i've never tried it so i'm kind of prejudging on just the context <laughs> yeah uh, 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 we need to get off that time it's so gross <laughs> so talking about uh that what about healthcare? <laughs> yeah how about healthcare? how's that going for all your eyeball infections uh, yeah it looks insurance. like uh they're they're gonna start see here's the thing right we're talking about healthcare. i know my my head's running 100 miles an hour trump's basically saying that they're really working on the repealing of obamacare and that it's almost done it's just down to dotting the i's and crossing affordable the care act <laughs> Yeah, but then he goes like then the next day he tweet he tweets and or says who knew healthcare would be so complex like as though he didn't know what the fuck he was doing. <laughs> That's such a random tweet, honestly. Like you're just at work one day, like who knew this would be so complex? But it's just who you know, would have thought it would have been fucking easy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's the biggest thing. Oh, sorry, Mr. President. Did you think you'd come in and it would be like a multiple choice, create your own law? <laughs> like, should the U.S. provide coverage for those over 75? Yes or no? That is not how you create a law. Yeah, I haven't read too much about it. I'm kind of just waiting until there's something, like, uh, just definite because, honestly... It's hard to, like, fucking comb through what, like, the Trump administration says, what the media says, what other people are saying. Like, there's just so much different information out there that I don't even know where the fuck to start. Because half the things I read, like, don't end up being true or it ends up being completely different. Or, like, the Trump administration says one thing, but it's completely wrong. And I just don't know what the fuck to believe anymore. (laughs) Well, they released a draft, right? But it wasn't completed. Like, there was a joke about it having a massive placeholder. Uh, where they were talking about like the continued co- uh, continuous coverage penalty, like if you lapse, then you may you'll have to pay a lot more. Okay. Um, punish the poor people who can't afford their bills. Um, Fuck them. Yeah. So, so if you're interested in what's going on with healthcare, John Oliver did uh, a quick segment. It's on YouTube. You don't have to have HBO to watch that segment. Uh, it's very useful. Uh, he talked about like Paul Ryan and his propositions. Right now, um, Republicans are trying to push the HSAs, which is a health savings account, which, again, is bullshit. You know, we've talked about how hard it is for people even to save for retirement. Now you're talking that people have to have a savings account for their health care. Wait, yeah, what the fuck? Who? (laughs) Especially, like, millennials aren't saving. Like, they're paying, like, school loans. I don't know a lot of millennials who have savings accounts. No, so a health savings account is basically a tax-free account that you can put X amount of dollars in. But but the problem is, is when you're starting that out, that means for the first five, ten years of your HSA, uh, you're not going to be able to afford anything. Uh, and, and, you know, one illness can wipe through hundreds of thousands. This isn't like uh, a Republican or even a Democratic thing, but I think sometimes a lot of politicians are completely out of touch with what, like... The middle class standard of living or for the and majority. lower is like like they just don't get it like they live a really nice life they they tend to have money obviously and, the, and yeah they I think they're very out of touch if they think that people can have a healthcare savings account like people are struggling right now with just normal savings accounts yeah and and the issue of course unfortunately is Trump's cabinet is uh, is pretty much billionaires so they <laughs> they just have no idea I'm pretty sure people like Betsy DeVos and Tim Price and stuff think that those lower income people are living off only a million dollars a year <laughs> yeah oh man like i really i wonder <laughs> like i, I <laughs> so um the other thing they were talking about uh you know obviously he had mentioned trump had mentioned the 
uh, those with pre-existing conditions would be able to get coverage. However, Paul Ryan was talking about doing that by having high risk pools. Uh, and what that means is people who are sick or have a pre-existing condition or are disabled would go into these high risk pools. So our insurance would be a lot more expensive. Um, and now that makes sense if you're a bit of an asshole, like why should me young and healthy pay for that weird unhealthy disabled person over there yeah. um but the issue is the the cost of living for someone with a disability or an illness is already much higher um <coughs> so i don't know that i mean that scares me as someone with health issues um, yeah i mean if they price it out of worth, out of those people's range what happens they die yeah it, it's just like yeah it's a uh, or they go into debt cleansing. and just yeah okay Probably die. Uh, uh, you know, I know people who just avoid medication and healthcare until they pass. I've known people that have passed because they didn't want to leave their family in bankruptcy. Yeah. Uh, actually, I know someone who had cancer who went through one round of chemo, ran through all their savings, and elected not to have any further treatment. Yeah, uh, and like I, and I don't, passed away. I don't want that. Like <laughs> I get people are concerned about healthcare costs and stuff, but like, <laughs> it's just I feel like the rest, like. The UK makes like it work. Barbaric. Canada makes it work. Like, yeah, they're not perfect. They have their problems. Non-urgent cases have to wait a lot longer. Um, but God, yeah, I miss the NHS. So, so that's going to punish the sick people. And and the, to to just put into it, Paul Ryan's really underestimated the amount of money the high risk pools would cost and and government subsidies with that. And and the issue with high risk pools is, it could be so expensive that it will make it so it's impossible. So let's take me, right? Because I'm arrogant and narcissist, so let's use me. Right now, I'm disabled, but I work. I work a lot harder than the average person. I have two jobs. I work approximately 80 plus hours a week to pay my medical bills and not need any benefit, mm -hmm. right? But there are months that it's very tight because the cost of my medication is very high. Um, and obviously I have to pay for extra help. Yeah. That's something I do out of my own pocket. Uh, and, and that's fine, I earn okay. If I was put in a high risk pool and perhaps the prices, and, and this is hypothetical, maybe went back to pre-Affordable Care Act day, my health insurance would probably be three or four grand a month. At that point, I couldn't afford health insurance. So what that would do is it would force me to stop running a company, stop hiring people, and just sit back and go on Medicaid and disability. Yeah, see, I... So I would drop out of the workforce to relieve that pressure on me. Yeah, I I <laughs> hope, like, three, like, price is that high. Hopefully it never even touches that, but... Shit. Well, even now, if I wanted to go onto the open market and buy health insurance, I, I was actually looking at this because, you know, with the divorce final, I lose my military health care and I need to look for normal health care. Now, there's something that's called continued care, which I can pay quite a bit. I think it's like $1,600 a quarter, um, but it's good coverage, right? Yeah. And I don't have to do anything. I, well, I mean, pay, obviously. Um, but I was like, well, is it cheaper for me to go on the open market? So I was looking, I spent about six hours looking last night for health plans. Now, obviously, Affordable Care Act is closed for the year, which is really dumb. Like, what if you need health insurance in July? You just fucked? Oh, wait, so um, people can't get insurance right now? Like, if they want to go through not that? Not the Affordable Care yeah. Act. I guess the registrations have closed. Um, <clears throat> so I was looking, and with my income, which it wasn't much last year because of the amount of medical expenses I have, um, it would cost me $900 a month and my deductible would be $2,000, which isn't bad. But like if I had to go to the ER, I'd pay $500 plus 54% of it, my costs. Oh. Ooh. If I went to my doctor, I would pay $30 plus 54% of my costs. My medication, like one of them, the generic of it, the Ventolin inhaler, it doesn't work for me and it gives me a horrible fungus shit in my mouth. So I have to have the, the Ventolin brand. Wait, what? F wait, what? Fungus? Like, wait, how does that work? 
Sorry, it it's sounded called, gross. I don't know. I'm just more. allergic to something that the generic uses. Yeah. So it like makes my mouth nasty. Yeah. Uh, so I have to use the actual brand. Um, and because of that, I'd have to pay 100% of that. So that would be $298 a month. One of my other drugs that I'm on is considered a premium drug. So I have to pay 80% of that. That's $850 I'd have to pay twice a month. Yeah. And so that's just for that one drug. That's just for that one drug. So currently, if I was to go on market, in the marketplace in the US, and get healthcare, I'd be looking at about three grand a month. That's fucking, that's insane. That's with my medication insane. and everything. That's with my medication, with the premium, and maybe one visit to the doctor a month. This, what bothers me is, all right, <laughs> okay, fine, fix the healthcare, because there are issues with the Affordable Care Act when, like, you know, some people, like, are paying so much more, and it, they, they're they having a hard time paying it. I get that. I think the idea was good. It's just there needs to be fixes, and, and you kind of expect that. Like video games, when you first put a game out there, you kind of figure out, all right, there's going to be some bugs, but we'll put patches through and make things better. Mm-hmm. What bothers me is, like, I want to hear more, and and Trump has talked about this. I want to see more where they're going to pharmaceutical companies and be like, all right, these costs are sort of insane. Just looking at the the costs of what every little thing costs in um, you know, at a hospital, um, at the pharmaceutical companies, what they're selling their drugs for, just it's disgusting. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, there's a lot of issues there where it's just things are way too expensive. And I get we live in a capitalistic society, but for something like healthcare. It's so harmful. Yeah, and and for those of you who are sitting there going, oh, they have to pay for their R&D and all that, I get that. But why is one drug, you know, 10, 15 times the price in America than it is in Canada or the UK? Yeah. I'm not even bringing in, like, Mexico and stuff. We all know drugs are cheaper there. Why is one ventil inhaler why is a ventil inhaler for an american going over to england you know 25 bucks when over here it's between 96 and 150 and like i get that a lot of that stuff costs a lot of money and so they raise the dr- the prices of the drugs but let's be real they're probably raising them a lot higher than they need to yeah it, i hope you know and i think that a lot of the problems with the insurance can be done if maybe there was a single buyer for medication and everyone bought their meds from the government. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know the solution. All I know is Americans are getting fucked. Um, and it, it sucks. And because America is so big, would one size, what would, you know, would one size ever fit? Oh, I don't think so. No. But, you know, the good thing about the Affordable Care Act is I know people here that through the tax credits and going through, uh, the Affordable Care Act thing in Georgia, I know people who have got basic coverage for 40, 50 bucks a month that they would never have had that option to get before. Yeah, and that's good. Yeah, I don't know. So, and obviously Medicaid, Trump has said he's not going to touch that part of the budget. He says all Medicaid and stuff's not going to be cut. However, Paul Ryan talked about paying states in Medicaid in like block grants. So for those of you who don't know, states pay x percentage of the bill and the government pays x percentage of the medicaid bills um but paul ryan was talking about giving people like one lump sum okay so that would be great if you got sick in april but if you got sick you know january you could be fucked oh my god yeah (laughs) sorry you got to die you were six months too late (laughs) um another issue i think with pre-existing conditions i want to bring up is sometimes people are like even something as little as like a yeast infection. I don't know how this works, if it's the insurance companies that do it, if it's doctors or whatever, but there are instances where people will have something like minor like that that, that, that heals. And then they get stuck ha- like being marked as if they have a pre-existing condition. So whenever they go to these places, like I don't know if they have like a file, I don't know how that works, but I was reading It's all computerized that. records. So the the health insurance companies will have doctors on site uh, so they can access your records. Yeah. So like when you apply for insurance, you give permission. So those doctors will get your records. They'll open it, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I think we also have to look at what we count as a pre-existing condition. And I think it also sucks if, say, you've had cancer, but you beat it uh 
you're still going to, it still counts as a pre-existing condition. Like, well, yeah, because your risk of cancer oh, is higher. Oh, yeah, I know, yeah. Um, that's one example that's kind of bad because, like, your risk is so much higher. Um, but, like, for other things, like, where it's like, okay, you had that condition, but it's gone. It's not coming back. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, here's, here's a prime example of how fucked we are over here with insurance. Before I had my visa, I would come to the U.S. to visit. Now, the law was I had six months in the U.S. and I had to do what I would call tap the border, right? So I had to leave and then come back in and I could come back in for another six months. <clears throat> so I got health insurance for a year. I got it in England to cover me fully in America. My deductible was zero. All my medications were covered. Wow. Um, beyond long-term critical care, uh, which did have a small deductible, I think it was like $1,000. Uh, and for an entire year's coverage, Kelly, could you guess how much that was with my health, which back then I was on hourly medication. I was taking 60 tablets a day. Uh, yeah, it, I was rough when I first moved over to the US. Mm -hmm. Can you guess how much that was for a year? <sighs> how much? I can't. 600 pounds, which at the what? time was 800, <laughs> which at the time was $815. Oh my God, sorry if I yelled in the microphone. That's crazy. Yeah. So basically what I pay, yeah, what I pay now for a month, I got for a year. That's paid too much. Well, I guess mine just raised to 300, but that's not that bad compared to most people. Mm, mine just raised to 300. <laughs> well, aren't you lucky? <laughs> it used to be 150. That was so nice. But then, it, yeah, with this last year raised, I don't know, it was like I hit 26 years old and they're like, ha they didn't even say happy birthday. They're like, we noticed you had a birthday. And I got this <laughs> letter. Give us more money. <laughs> I got this letter on my birthday. So we're raising your premium to 200. I was like, <laughs> they didn't even say happy birthday. They could have at least said like Aww. happy birthday. But no, they're just like, no, you, you have to pay more now. And then in Georgia, on your birthday, you have to redo your tags on your car. So it's like, happy birthday, go to the DMV. Oh, gosh, that's stupid. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck um, you. Yeah. So the other weird thing, healthcare-wise, that Paul Ryan was talking about was refundable tax credits. Now, this is really weird because it's on age and not income. Hmm. So, like, everyone, like, over the age of, uh, I think it was 65, would get $3,000. Everyone between the age of, you know, 18 and 25 would get $1,200. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's cool for a small country, maybe like Sweden. Uh, but that just seems to dilute the money for those who really need it. Like, why should a multimillionaire get the same as someone who's living on disability or maybe not that's the best not the best example because they'd probably have medicaid but you know someone who's working a minimum wage job earning 200 bucks a week why would should they get the same help as someone who's earning 10 million a month yeah you know? uh, i don't know and, and that takes away money that could be used for those who need it so i I don't even know why it would be on age on income. Like I get that, especially Republicans like things easy, right? No mess. We just send it to you automatically. All the same tax rate. You know? All this, like, yeah, like stuff like that yeah, is usually and what they're pushing. I get that. But practically, it could be so bad. Like the money that that could help save someone rather than giving it to someone who's earning, you know, even 250 grand a year earners shouldn't be getting that. Yeah. Hmm. I would argue that those who are earning six figures shouldn't be getting it as well, but uh, especially not those. So I don't know. I'm I'm scared uh, about the healthcare. Yeah, and I I understand um, that of course. Like I think anyone who health issues, it's a really scary time for them because you know that, that you don't know what to expect. You don't know what's coming, and that's your fucking health. It's one of the most important things about you. Yeah, I don't want to have to go back to England. I mean, I'm okay on this military expansion healthcare program. You know, it's very expensive, um, but it will cover me for 36 months. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Trump's presidency is a little longer than that. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's very scary because it's like in three years, am I going to have to pack up my life and go back to England? I just don't know. Um, 
And it, it, yeah, it's very scary. And I'm very fortunate to be in that situation with this healthcare. Um, That's a weird thing too. Like I for didn't... you, you can pack up and go back. Like for people who are American citizens, like what do they do in that situation? Just, you know, oh, I guess I got to die now. Well, I've got to be able to afford to pack up and go back. I mean, oh, yeah, that's I'd lose true. all my stuff. Most of my stuff would go because it doesn't run in England, you know. So, and I have to pay huge amounts of taxes to get my stuff back into England. So it would pretty much be starting again with nothing if I went back to England. Yeah. Fuck. Yard sale at Kitties. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you are interested in... Um, Learning a bit more about where we are on healthcare. John Oliver did a great thing. I'll put the link in description. Oh my God, didn't Nigel Farage like bump into Trump the other day in Trump Tower or something and have dinner with him? And I think the press reported oh. it as he was seen, he was seen afterwards in the hotel lobby talking to anybody who would listen about his meal with Trump. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you know, it was another thing, Marine Le Pen. Um... The, she's running for president of France. Uh, yeah. She was like, she didn't even have a dinner with Trump. She just like went to Trump Tower, I think, for some publicity. Like just to be seen eating there. Oh, God. <laughs> it's so corny. Oh, uh, what, what are we going to cover? So do we, we need funny topics. So... We do have funny topics this time, right? Do we? Oh, we talked about no, the we... eyeball licking. Yeah. Oh, a nuclear bunker raid. In the UK, oh, yeah. found a million pound uh, cannabis farm. I just thought that was funny. That's epic. Yeah, I want to find it. <laughs> Let me find that. Why aren't I finding this shit? We'll link to this in the description because it says there are 20 rooms in the building with almost everyone converted for wholesale production of cannabis plants. You know these motherfuckers who are keeping cannabis illegal. You know they got a fucking nuclear bunker with tons of it. I know it. Uh, Fuck them. It's such an easy medicine. You just grow it. Damn. Yeah, but <clears throat> it doesn't look like Sessions is going to allow us to have it, man. Like, Trump's been talking, or Spicer, Sean Spicer, the White House press secretary, has been talking like the feds are going to clamp down on uh, federal law regarding cannabis. Not medical, though, but normal cannabis. Um, they can because be, yeah, they, it's a gateway drug because I think his reasoning was because of the opioid crisis. Yeah, it's making the opioid <clears throat> crisis worse. Uh, what? No, like in states where it's been legalized, even medically, and medically, like that, that's painkillers people can use instead of opioids or even just getting off of them. A widely publicized study in the esteemed Journal of American Medical Association's Internal Medicine reported that the enactment of medical oh my god my throat the enactment of medical marijuana legalization laws is associated with a year over year reductions in opioid overdose mortality mm -hmm. overall researchers determined states with medical cannabis laws had a 24.8 percent lower mean annual opioid overdose mortality rate compared with states without medical cannabis laws so mr fucking spicer actually you're fucking wrong and maybe i'm going conspiracy fucktard here but why would you suddenly talk about enforcing the federal law on cannabis like the same fucking day you revamp private prison thing that obama clamped down on that's so sketchy and i almost thought like we could see this where that uh, doesn't matter what you know if trump had won or what hillary i almost saw like them going after opioid abuse as a like filler for the war on drugs and just marijuana wise i thought they were no matter who we got they were gonna loosen up on marijuana and start going after other things to kind of fill that gap of um because like there's so much funding to the dea there's a lot of money to be made with marijuana being illegal for certain you know like private prisons is a big one um law enforcement pharmaceutical companies there's a lot of money there that that could be lost if marijuana was legalized so but like <sighs> he's oh, i don't even know where to begin like someone needs to sit down with this fucking idiot all of them sessions price trump whatever that twat face is, is that, wait, price oh. trump session spicer and like 
explain the facts. But do you think they know the facts and they just lie? I don't. I really don't think. This is how I think all the decisions are being made right now. I think Trump is sat at like some nice table with Taco Bell, fried chicken, whatever, Hell yeah. watching fucking Fox News <laughs> in his fucking bathrobe that he doesn't own. And he's got an Xbox and he's sat going through Twitter. Me That's why Trump sends his days, right? And then I think he's got some right wing, bigoted, old school reefer madness nut job that comes in and says, uh, Mr. President, did you know that uh, marijuana is a devil's drug? Uh, the Mexicans like it. It makes uh, people rape people and murder them and uh, leads to opioid abuse. Yeah, there's actually a oh, quote really? from yes, Sessions. Yes, sir. Could you, could you sign this? Sure. Where is it? I got to find this. Um, he it's said... Fucking bowl of lucky He basically charms. said that... Um, like, oh, man... I'm really, oh, I can't find the quote. That's someone else quoting him. He said that, Mar like, he was arguing that, like, you know, they want states to do what they want with marijuana, right? But at the same time, he said, but federal law says it's illegal. Um, but he also said, and he argued, it's an argument against himself in the same wherever oh happened. yeah uh hang on. man i wish i could find this i thought i had linked i got it, it. i got, you got it. it where he I says exactly. it's violent if it's not regulated <laughs> like basically arguing uh for it. it should be legalized so that you know no one's giving money to cartels or gangs who are making marijuana this way we have it regulated the government's getting money and we know who the like people making it are yeah um you sent this to me here we go Strangely, Sessions seemingly countered his own counter-argument at one point. You can't sue somebody for drug debt, he said. The only way to get your money is through strong-arm tactics and violence. Yeah. Uh, and violence tends to follow that. He added, but that's an issue with illegal drugs, not tightly regulated and taxed legal ones. So, like, are they going... I don't know what they're fucking planning here. I almost feel like maybe they'll go after recreational, but then like more legalized medical. I don't know what the fuck they're planning, but I hope they don't fucking go down the whole road of the war on drugs again because it's been so it problematic in so many different ways and it doesn't work. work. Here's my worry. Like Trump is such a like, brat of a president right i just feel like he's like there's not enough marshmallows in my lucky charm <laughs> and like throws it across the fucking house but like someone needs to sit him down with facts and i like typically a, an issue like this would go through congress and i don't think it would pass because i think there are enough of our generation that are like no this has to fucking change cigarettes and alcohol are legal why is cannabis not like I, I believe in legalizing both recreational and medical. I believe in there being some kind of education around it because you can consume too much cannabis. No, it doesn't harm your body. It just makes some people stupid. Like you have to understand your tolerances. If you make recreational cannabis legal overnight, people are gonna do dumb shit. It's not gonna be violent. They're gonna overeat Doritos. And go to the and hospital up, probably because like, they think they're like go having to the a heart hospital. attack. They're not going to understand how powerful edibles are and stuff. Like, there needs to be YouTube videos. There is a guy who does trips. He does um, safe tripping videos on YouTube. I'll see if I can find the link uh, and I'll put it. Because, you know, if you're using any kind of drug, be it cannabis or, or mushrooms or anything, not that I'm condoning it, but there are safe ways to do this. There are ways to test the drugs and things like that. But Trump's campaign said that he wanted, he felt like he should legalize all drugs and then he could regulate them and it would be a safer marketplace. And that's true. And now, I think it is true because it even gets drugs out of the hands of kids, right? So like Colorado, for example, if you go to Colorado or any state, it's legal. If you go to a dispensary, you don't even walk into a store before like you don't see a store you walk into the building and it's like almost like um a security checkpoint where they yeah, make sure you're of check. fucking age and then you can go to the store like behind a big locked door and like i don't think sessions understands this i i i remember reading a comment and i can't remember where i think it might have been the hill um where he was like you know it's not going to be america's not going to be safe if it's 
in every grocery store on every shelf, you know. So I, I think he thinks it's just sold openly. Like like you'd go to the grocery store and be like, I want a pound of chicken and well, even an so, even cannabis. so alcohol is like uh. it depends on the state. It's not always like oh. New Hampshire they have state run liquor stores. Um, I think you can buy beer. I don't know. Alcohol in America confuses the fuck out yeah, of me. Yeah, some England's states have like fucking drive through alcohol stores. Like I live in a dry county, I think, or maybe the county I used to live in in Georgia. I don't drink, so I'm the worst person to ask. But I think the last county we lived in was dry, or maybe this one is, and you can't buy it. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right. There are different uh, things there, but oh my gosh. This is just, it's its annoying. I will agree with Jeff Sessions on one thing he said about marijuana. He did argue that, like, marijuana nowadays has a lot of THC. Like, they're getting better at making it or growing it. But you know me. what you're going to get. You didn't used to. Oh, yeah. No, that's a good point, too, though. Like, that, <laughs> yeah, you know you... what you're going to get. They tell you how much is in there. But, again, this is sort of arguing because people are ignorant. They're not going to yeah. understand how powerful that can be. And they might, you know, like you just said, they're gonna like and have that's a why brownie. I go for the education thing. They're gonna have a full like, fucking hundred milligram brownie <laughs> and then start fucking hearing aliens. Like, <laughs> like if here's how I would do it, and I would hate this going to a dispensary and having to do this, but this is an option that if you are a tourist, not a native of that state, haven't used a dispensary before, why shouldn't you have to sit through a little video explaining, you know? basic things basic safety you know when you go to a paintball field you watch a safety video when you learn to drive you watch safety videos um unfortunately you don't have that with alcohol but before you fuck there's sex education videos it's like that there is no harm in making people watch a you know one to three minute video on how to consume cannabis safely yeah i think i think that would be good i, I don't see why that's not an option yes it's annoying if you know what you're doing but i would rather give three minutes of my time up to watch some bullshit video and know that maybe one less person is going to be a statistic of going to the er because they ate too many edibles and didn't know where the fuck the <laughs> dragons came from yeah that that's a big thing with marijuana i think is uh people will have too much and then they they feel weird and it it's just their and body, an edible like, is a very very different oh mind. yeah yeah definitely I, it's a body like, high yeah like i have to have half the milligrams in an edible as i would if i was consuming but like for me if i was to consume of course i don't uh unless i'm in colorado like i go for very low thc stuff and that's specifically because now cannabis can be tailored for you and, and for me i need it to fight my inflammation um i hate being high I'm the pro-cannabis, anti-stoner person. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll get the stuff that's 5% THC or below and 20 to 30% CBD, maybe 10% CBN if I can get it. I think one thing, too, is say, even if people are, like, ignorant about marijuana and they have a ton of brownies, whatever, and they do freak out, like, they're still safe. Nothing bad is going to happen to them. No, they're going to feel really shitty. Now, all the dispensaries I visited in, in Colorado have been very good. You know, when you go in, are you local? Have you used this before? Yeah, have you tried cannabis before? Yeah, I was going to bring before? that up. They're really good Do about you that. Need they need any help? to everyone. Yeah, don't forget with edibles. You know, even though I, I, I'd gone to this dispensary multiple times, don't forget with edibles. Takes 45 minutes to kick in. Take one bite. Wait. If it's not good enough take another bite don't eat the whole thing like every dispensary you go in they preach this it's autopilot to them so i don't know how the increase has gone up maybe people are buying and giving it to friends who haven't had that spiel but the cannabis industry is doing what it can now i do think that there should be some videos on youtube perhaps talking you through how to have a, a safe but that, again high. that ex that sort of enforces the point that people are going to go looking for that before they um just use it which people are people just use things they don't care they just go for it and with drugs that's just a big no-no you really do have yeah. to research drugs before you do them yeah and i and i think it's the same with cannabis like for me sativa doesn't help it makes me worse um i guess it stimulates the nerves so i get a lot more pain if i'm on sativa whereas indica knocks me the fuck out which means pretty much during the day i can't use cannabis i don't like i can indica. use it of an evening <laughs> that's shit i will I, like just fucking sleep for like ever yeah you know i've tried variety of hybrids with different different results 
Um, but, you know, I look at it from a completely medicinal point of view because I, I, yeah. I really don't like being high. It's why I don't take my pain meds. So, you know, with, with so many varieties of cannabis out there to do different things, like if you are going to a state, you know, that has legal cannabis, do some research. Work out, do you want a body high? Do you just want to sleep? Like for me, when I go to Colorado, I'm just happy I can get a good night's sleep. I don't have to wait three or four hours for my body to get comfortable enough for me to pass out. <laughs> I was that's bonus time. I was in Colorado and I was just asking like something just keep me peppy and up and happy and laughing. They recommended Lindsay Lohan strain. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. That Lindsay Lohan was it was good. Um But also if you are going to a legal state and you do go to a dispensary, um on the thing, it will have a breakdown of the chemical composition so you know how many you know what the percentage of thc is what the percentage of everything is so don't be cool and go oh, i'm going to get this 98 percent live resin uh start slow <laughs> <laughs> oh god i can't even imagine someone doing that first off right off the bat uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah i mean maybe there'll be more cannabis education um I personally am of a very weird belief that thinks all drugs should be legal and taxed and regulated. And I think with those tax and regulation, there should be centers for people to safely go I and want use that. their drugs. I want that for the opioid e epidemic. I really think it would just help so much. Um, I think last year, the the one in Canada, the, the center that just allows people to go and inject or do whatever they do, uh, had 400 overdoses take place in their center, not one death. Wow. Wait, but wait, so they had overdoses take place there? Are they? Yeah, so people who go, people go and use okay. at this center, it's a safe place to use and it has nurses and doctors on hand. Okay, I thought it so was like So if someone the... overdoses, they get instant narcon basically, right? So that's 400 lives saved. And you can say, well, they're junkies, they're a drain on society. Sure, right now, but they're, they're society members with potential. <laughs> I, yeah. They're the future educators of drug abusers. You know, they're the... Yeah. There's, I just, I, I don't want know if I necessarily think it's good if they can just keep going and keep going and keep going. And, and yeah, they should be able to, but I would also hope at centers like that, I would one, want the doctors or nurses to administer the drug. I wouldn't want it up to people. Um, you can't do that for liability reasons. All you can do is have medical care there. But what it does do is it gives them familiarity, right? They see these people who aren't using drugs every day and if they want treatment, it is there and it is available without delay. If you went in and you said, I'm sick of this, I've overdosed twice this month, you guys have saved me, I need help. Yeah. That would be like, okay, let's go. <clears throat> Most drug users get to a point where they're done, but they can't quit. Uh huh. Well, that's what I was going to say is like, okay, if there's liability issue, fine. But um, with that particular point, uh, but another point is I want those centers to encourage them toning down this usage. I don't want like. But if you over preach, they're not going to go. I get the over preaching it's a fine thing. Line. I know. But. <sighs> they need to feel safe and welcome and no different from anyone else. And in, in a way you have to let you have to be supportive while still letting them know what they're doing isn't really right. And that I want um, a happy mix of that too, because again, yeah, you're right. Like you can't completely life. just shame them while they're there. Yeah, they're at the lowest point in life. The last thing they need is shaming. They know that they're at the lowest point in life, but they have to be ready to reach up and ask for help because if they're not, rehab is not gonna work. Mm -hmm. They have to want it. So preaching just doesn't help. Like court mandated rehab doesn't help. If that person doesn't want to change, they're not going to. So while they're going through this thing, while they're going through this phase, let's support them, let's help them and be there when they need it. You know, I'd rather no one use heroin. Again, another drug caused by the, the pharmaceutical injury. In industry, in <laughs> you know, injury. Well, I mean, cause much injury. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, <clears throat> all this stuff. And the most severe drug addictions have ultimately been put on this world by our pharmaceutical industry. Um, so yeah, I have huge sympathy and like, for that. Th that's a frustration too with the pharmaceutical industry is like, 
sometimes there are issues. Like there was just a story where they were working with, there was some pharmaceutical company working with some doctor um, where the doctor ran his own pharmacy out of like the, um, you know, uh, his center. And they basically made a deal that he would keep prescribing things and like just making money, like where they have talked to doctors and this is toned down a lot. It's a lot harder for doctors, I think, to prescribe pain medication now because they, the, of the opioid epidemic. Is that correct? Is that it's a lot yeah, harder? Yeah, like my... And that's why heroin isn't locals. increased? Yeah, so what, it, you know, the pharmaceutical industry got everyone hooked and then cut them off. Or well, the DEA cut them off. I mean, like, it used to be bad. And it's still pretty bad. Like, for me, I get offered insane amounts of pain pills, but I also have it in my notes not to give me pain pills uh, it's not that i had a problem or anything like that i just don't like them they make me feel really really sick i'm super sensitive um but yeah it's hard like i when i did last get pain pills even getting a child's dose uh like i i had to go to the pharmacy to fill it like you're given this certificate with like holograms on it and a dea number and you have to go and pick it up yourself i couldn't just get a friend to go pick it up like i normally do. yeah Huh. It was very fancy. I felt like I had an award for an overachievement. <laughs> it's like, congratulations, you win some Tramadol. <laughs> Side effects include cold sweats, <laughs> fever, nausea, vomiting, and maybe constipation. <laughs> and I think even like some of these hardcore like painkillers, like they are, they do help people in certain situations. Absolutely. I've seen it. You know, I know I have friends who live a perfectly normal life. Um, they have similar conditions to me. Uh, and, you know, they're on reasonably high dose pain pills. But at the same time, <clears throat> you know, we know our life isn't going to be as long as everyone else's, but we'd rather take it pain free. Yeah. And I think that is a patient choice. The issue is abuse. Like, there's no machine that can tell a doctor whether you're generally in pain. The human body is still a huge mystery. You know, we always hear about people who found out they had these devastating diseases, but they were diagnosed of, of fibromyalgia like five years ago or whatever. But it turns out it wasn't fibro. It was some like nerve degeneration or something like that. You know, we see it a lot. Uh, maybe I see it a lot because of the arthritis, but <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, it, it's a tough one. Speaking of Ultimate. nerves. <laughs> Go. So Kim, jo Kim Jong-un's brother was assassinated and it's on video <laughs> so i know i'm horrible for laughing why oh oh laughing at it i'm laughing but every time someone talks about this and i know it's serious but all i think about is that chick who did it with the lol sweater wait she did it with a lol sweater she had a sweater on that said lol didn't she tell them that she thought she was on a game show or something yeah <laughs> but i just can't get past the lol sweater so what just came out is that he was killed by a VX nerve agent, which is a su it's super deadly. And it was at an airport. Yeah. This is something that even if you have a like microscopic exposure to this stuff, you're probably going to die in like minutes. It's insane. It's one it's it's <clears throat> classified I think as a weapon of mass destruction. So it is, yeah. If North Korea was responsible for this, I'm a little it is a little concerning if they have fucking VX nerve agents that they could just if this stuff was unleashed in an airport, everyone would die. So that's pretty it's, freaky. Yeah, how did this little girl in an LOL sweater... Well, not little girl, but... Yeah, I guess she had, like, a very small amount. But, yeah, they're trying to figure that out now, like, how she sort of did this with that um, VX Nerve agent. Uh, I have a video on VX Nerve gas that kind of gives an overview of it and how hardcore the stuff can be. Very, very scary. I am horrified. Yeah, so hopefully <laughs> we have we see no more VX nerve agent anywhere. But yeah, that's that's that. I think we, everyone makes fun of North Korea because ah ha ha, they're gonna nuke someone. Yeah, right. Their missiles suck. Uh, but in this case, they could cause a lot of damage wherever. Yeah, you know. Oh, on a lighter note, you know what else could cause a lot of damage? A dick. <laughs> going through you to your throat. <laughs> going so your... deep inside you, I can see it at the back of your throat. <laughs> yes, what? 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 
chicken that's not chicken. Oh. Did you see that shit? It's Subway. That's what I get at Subway. Uh, I guess the other 50% is soy. So it's not the worst. It's not too bad, but like if I get chicken, it better be. Fucking I would like chicken. it to be chicken. Isn't that a big? Isn't that a big fuck up? Like if you say it's chicken, shouldn't it be fuck? Like do they have it? I used like, to work there at a Subway, percentage? but I never remember seeing anything about soy being in the chicken. Yeah, like is there? A, how much shit can you put in it while still being allowed to legally call it chicken? Yeah, because if it's fifty percent chicken, that's like I feel like I should know it's only fifty percent. Yeah, and in some cases it was 48.2. Oh, see, if it was like 95% chicken, okay, I get it. But like otherwise, I think people should know. 50-50. You're getting the oven-roasted chicken soy. They should have just said that. Oven-roasted soy-infused chicken, maybe. (laughs) Soy-infused chicken. That might be a hit with like health-conscious people. They'll just, soy-infused chicken? Wow. Oh, this is a new thing. Sell yeah, for $10. I mean, I just, uh, I don't know. This country, the chicken industry is fucked. I mean, they make fully grown chicken in like seven weeks now. Oh, yeah. It's chicken. Yeah, they're still it's so... babies when they're adult sized, so they can't walk. They just kind of lay there. Wasn't that a thing where like they made chickens that had like multiple wings, like more than they should? And there's just. I mean, what they do with the I... cows, I don't know. I feel like that wasn't super sized. I mean, they're. But I don't know. I feel like you've been it reading it's been comic while. books. But maybe. But yeah, just making animals bigger than they need to be. Cows too. Fuck. Um, in positive things, five HIV patients left it virus free. Oh yeah, that was after cool. After vaccine. That's a happy news. That is a happy news. And the Earth like exoplanets, the seven Earth like exoplanets. I just like space so much. I've been learning. I, I, I learn a lot about space in my spare time. Well, tell us about the planets, Janet. <laughs> I don't know why I suddenly went Rocky Horror on you, but. Actually, the, I, I so whatever. They discover these seven Earth-like exoplanets. They don't know a whole lot now other than that they're there and, and they go around that. Um, it's, I think it's a, around a red dwarf sun. Uh, but they're all in the inhabitable zone. So that's kind of how you get, I think, how they classify if it's Earth-like or not, whether it's in the habitable zone habitable zone of uh, the sun. So we'll know more eventually. But it's really fucking hot, isn't it? Like 14,000 Fahrenheit or something? What? The, one of them? One, oh, I didn't read that. I didn't go. I don't, I don't know, think maybe I saw I'm that. Just... I don't know. What that, that wouldn't be habitable then, though. No, but it's in the habitable zone. It doesn't mean it's all habitable. It's like chicken might not be chicken. It might be half soy. Um, well, I'm pretty sure. I, where did I read it? Maybe it's the, um, huh. Maybe I've been reading I comic think books. Maybe that was about I'm the pretty... sun. There. Well, no, that's not enough. The red red dwarfs are like. Um, I think they're uh, less hardcore suns. I don't know how to like properly say it. Like less hardcore. What the fuck is that? Soft core sun. Soft core sun. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll we'll look that up and talk about it more next week. But five HIV patients left virus free with no lead for daily drugs in early vaccine trials. That is fucking epic. Yeah, that's great. Um, there's been a lot of progress with HIV. Uh, like it used to be a death sentence, and then now it, it's been more like okay, you can take medication um, to really you know help yourself. But now it looks like I feel like we're. Uh, Getting closer to it being cured, or at least vaccinated. Yeah, it's, it used to be like hopes and prayers, thoughts and prayers. That's all you could do. Oh, talking about that, what about uh, Lana Del Rey? You want to talk about that? Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking epic. So at first, I, I heard about this witch thing, right? And uh, <laughs> there were a bunch of witches, like, sort of, I don't know how they put it out there. Or if it was the liberal media. Uh, <laughs> but they just basically said, okay... Uh, there's a waning moon, some type of moon. You do this hex and it'll, um, bind someone. So it's not like a harmful sort of like curse on someone, but it's not exactly positive either, I guess. Uh, but they basically just made a list of ingredients for how to perform this hex on Trump and his supporters. And, uh, yeah, Lana Del Rey tweeted that she just put a picture 
and like how you know get the ingredients ready for these days sort of supporting the whole witch thing and I guess they did it but what I thought was really funny is there was like this is all on Twitter and people are like you know yes we're gonna be witches but then you also have these people that were like prayer against the witches we need to pray for Trump <laughs> and fight the witches <laughs> It was just wild as fuck. I was like, Jesus Christ, we've gotten to the point where there's... <laughs> we're using witchcraft in prayers. <laughs> there are witch That's battles in like... That's the last fucking ditch attempt right there. <laughs> uh, that's just... It was silly and funny. I mean, maybe, maybe it's real. But we'll link to where you can get the ingredients. <laughs> yes, if you like, if you want to join if it. If you'd like, you need an send orange us candle. videos of you. Send us... Link us to the videos of you hexing trump yes please do record maybe it. it'll work who knows i mean fuck it try everything right yeah so i i guess the witches that ended up being outside of trump tower there weren't that many i think it was like under 10 maybe not under 10 maybe a little more but it wasn't a ton of witches out there unless witches are more private and they just sort of do it in their own homes i think if i was to do that i yeah i would probably do it in my own home rather than on the streets yeah especially like outside trump tower i think you probably get attacked. No, yeah, they recorded it. The witches were fine. People are just taking pictures of them. Like, what the fuck are these people doing? Yeah, like, uh, I don't know. I feel, I feel like any kind of public display of paganism is probably not a welcome thing in America, especially right now. Yeah, I feel like... So it's good that they got away with it. I mean, I, I just... Man, if you're not a... A white Christian, I, 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 fuck. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like we're becoming a lot less tolerant. Well, I feel like the older generation's becoming less tolerant. I feel like our generation is like, what the fuck? I feel like a lot on? of people are just fucking assholes lately. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like every time I, like, get on the internet and look around, like, look around at viral videos, there's, like, white oh, people look, being Trump's. attacked for being white. There's black people attacked for being black. There's this. There's that. The Jewish cemetery is a big one lately. Um, That's awful. Yeah. And you've got, like, all these attacks on these Jewish cemeteries. And then you've got Trump having all these issues. And instead of, like, facing them, he's like, I know what I'm going to do transgender kids can't use bathrooms yeah this is oh my god like leave it the fuck it's alone like, just i wish they would focus on what they said they were gonna focus on just leave the fucking bathrooms alone didn't they say they're gonna leave them alone like god it's just they should like i mean everyone's gotta pee and then i saw there was a a story i don't have this on the topic list but you probably heard about this there was a um it was a I'm trying to think, was it, it was a girl who was transitioning uh, to, no, she had, tra not, I don't fucking know. I'm going to delete this and edit it out. Was it a boy transitioning to a girl wrestling? Yes. But okay, no, 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 so it was, no, it's the opposite. Girl transitioning to boy. Yes. So. Okay. Yeah. So she's on testosterone. But I kept seeing everyone call her she. Wait, no. Okay, yeah, that's what it was. No, that's what it was. So So it was a girl becoming a boy. They should have been using he. But they were right. using she because she, I think The she is why I got confused. Yeah, I everything I read kept saying transition. she and that's why I kept And I was like, confused. why is that a problem? Cuz if it's a boy becoming a girl, then she's not on steroids. So what's the fucking problem? She's on estrogen. She's making herself weaker. Yeah. Okay. I, I think well, I think there's an interesting argument even if you're on estrogen if you have a male body fighting women, I think there's an interesting argument for that because men are so much stronger. Like, it, there's only so much I think estrogen can do and definitely it is making that person weaker. But in this situation, she, it's a he, girl on testosterone. God, I'm so annoyed that all these like stupid articles I was reading said she because it was so confusing. Um, he wanted to fight boys. So he's taking testosterone wanted to fight boys but texas law wouldn't allow that so he's been fighting girls and is doing super well and in most cases if you say you were taking testosterone as a woman and fighting you know you would it, it it's not allowed in this case there's a medical exception for him to use testosterone it's tough for him right 
that it, that law it, wouldn't allow him to fight boys when that makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, I think if he's willing to fight boys, he should be. Yeah. Right? If he is identifying as male, which he clearly is, then that is all that should need to happen. It's tough because, like, I can understand why the the girls would be upset, the girls' parents would be upset, because it, you know, it, in layman's terms, the first thing we see is a boy is on steroids, right? And we know it's not; it's testosterone, but it is a strength booster. But if, and in my head, I'm thinking, well, if he wanted to fight girls, that's a bit weird. But knowing that he wanted to fight boys, mm -hmm. my problem isn't with him. Yeah, and that's what I saw a lot state. of people attacking. It's with the rules. And I have a feeling if this little boy was in California or somewhere a little more tolerant, this wouldn't have even been an issue. It's like, you're a boy? Cool. You fight with the boys. Like, it doesn't get any simpler. Yeah. But then you make boy, the argument. Go with the boys. You're a girl? Go with the girls. It's a hard situation because you have some people who want to say men and there women are equally advantage. strong, but that's not true. It's never, I don't know if it'll ever be, you know, maybe it'll be true one day through evolution. But like right now, women are so much weaker than men. When a man tr transitions to a woman, you know, all these hormones and everything are being entered into their body. So it's very hard, like physically and emotionally, for them to get used to that but yeah i mean you're right in sports it's a bitch and i don't know how we're gonna do it i don't uh... and it's like it's not i'm not saying those things because i'm like oh no they can't do it it's just a difficult situation because there are such most... differences between the sexes physically and i think most trans athletes would agree with you they're like we're in this awkward position so i, I feel for them oh, because totally. i know they're not blind to the issues and i feel for like that boy it's wanted to compete I think it affects... so bad, probably. Just wanted to compete so bad, so was willing to compete with the girls. Because guess what? You can get scholarships. You can get so much from doing sports in school. What what bothered me a lot, just seeing the reaction from those articles and see even some of the articles, it's like they were putting blame on that boy. And it's like, no. On like, a kid. Yeah, on the it's fucking like, yeah, kid. Yeah, let's all, let's all gather around. He us. just wants to kid. beat up girls. This is bullshit. Or, well, they were calling, yeah, she no, just wants to I... beat up girls. Yeah, because that's what they kept saying, she. And it's like, no, oh. like, they want, like, fuck. I it's think if he situation. is comfortable, if he is comfortable fighting boys, he should fight boys. And I think regardless of whether he's comfortable fighting boys or not, he should fight boys. He shouldn't be fighting girls. Yeah. No other boy could fight a girl. I don't know why this is complicated. He's male. He's identifying as male. He should fight the boys. Now, when it comes to adult sports, it gets a bit more complicated. Yeah, definitely. And like, yeah, there was that uproar over. And I don't know if it was the UFC or if it's And I don't MMA know if there's a solution. I don't know if there's a solution that's going to please everybody. You know, one, are there trans-only divisions? Well, <laughs> probably not. You know? See, and that would be so difficult. It's like, do you have do? enough people to compete? Uh... Exactly. Everything like that because of all the oppression over the years. Even now, not many people are, are comfortable with coming out as, as trans. Uh, so I don't know. I, I don't see a solution. And I hate seeing a problem without being able to come up with a solution. Um, and I don't even know if the trans community have a solution. Yeah. And work. then I read another article that was arguing <coughs> women should be allowed to compete in men's sports because we're the same physically. And it was like this really pro-woman uh, article. And it's like, okay, that's like, no, I don't want to fucking fight men. Are you kidding me? I do see like some like um, branches of feminism arguing that women are equal in that regard and like it's just not true like no it's not science and says I, no i wish i could come out with a solution that would help all exoskeletons uh, th that the trans will make community. everyone equal maybe then maybe uh -huh. we can see some well then is that, i was just gonna say then we can see some competitions then it's the fucking robots though yeah i think if everyone wears robot suits let's do it that way robot models. then really with you your skill comes from your strategy yeah, and then if everyone's strength is the same, ta-da, we solved it! Wow! Yay! Yes. That Katie that would Kelly actually be really good. Solving the world. That would be cool. Uh, so in bad news, Trump just tweeted. <laughs> what did he just tweet? 
I am calling on Congress to repeal and replace Obamacare with reforms that expand choice, increase access, lower costs, and provide better care. I mean, off the bat, that doesn't that? sound horrible. You smell that? Bullshit. Oh my god, I was actually smelling because there was. I was like, "Fuck, something's burning." I think Alex might be cooking something <laughs> downstairs. Jesus Christ! I was like, "How can Kitty smell it though?" <laughs> oh, that was weird. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, We'll see. He's having a live stream about it or something? He's doing it. Yeah, it's a live stream right now. I'm I'm kind of twitching. I'm like, Kelly, we're doing the podcast and he's doing his thing. But it's all, I think it's over. I think it was at 8 p.m. Mm, yeah, I think it was. Maybe 9. So it doesn't matter. For those of you who are listening, this is Tuesday. You'll hear this Thursday. So you'll already be up to What's date. What's trending? And Radical Islamic terrorism. <laughs> Bunch of names. <laughs> by American and higher American. Oh, yeah. Trump's, like, on a Twitter binge right now. Like, the only reason I looked at my phone is because I wondered why it was just constantly lighting up. I was like, oh, Great, Trump. great wall is trending. Fuck. We will, oh, here's a quote. We will soon begin the construction of a great, great wall along our southern border. $25 billion. Imagine how much health care. Oh, wait, and uh, 50-something billion more going towards military? Because we don't spend a lot of money on that already. And he's like wants fifteen thousand more ICE agents, but apparently like no one's qualified for it. So there's already two thousand open vacancies. So total he needs seventeen thousand more ICE agents, but no one's qualified enough or wants the job. I wish um instead of a wall, he would go the route of like hiring more people to just be, you know, on the border. It would be considerably cheaper than the $25 billion. Yeah. Plus the upkeep costs. Like, the thing is with this fucking wall is, yeah, it's going to cost X amount, you know, to build, right? There's companies putting in their bids now. The issue is fucking maintaining that bitch. How long do we plan on having this wall, too? Like... I, I want there to be some kind of Berlin Wall moment where everyone goes and knocks it the fuck down. But see, and that's what I think is going to happen. And then it's just going to be like, oh, remember when we spent all this money on this wall? But then, like, oh, I just don't think it's necessary. I no, get that there are issues. People... And I get, yeah, you do have, you know, there are some hardcore cartels. And, you know, they do bring people up here. But it's... No. If that's you like, made the drugs legal, cartels wouldn't be a fucking issue. God, I thought... And <laughs> that's another thing that sort of bothers me about them, like, saying all these things about recreational marijuana. It's like, it's that, that recreational marijuana is hurting the people you want to hurt. You know, with this wall, like, we don't and want things going over the border, so but you know what we could do money. so much better is we would get money out of the... Whatever. I can't even... I will happily pay in Colorado my 30% tax or 35% tax. I pay that and I don't care. Yeah, I would prefer to pay it and see it go to the state and to American citizens rather than going to God knows who. I am happy to give that 35% tax to a state that has embraced something I am passionate about. I don't give a shit. I would probably pay 45% tax. Legalize it. Happily. Pay for the wall with weed money. No, don't pay for the wall. <laughs> fuck the wall. No, I know. Fuck the wall, but <laughs> if you're going to do wall. it. Uh, yeah, there was. there's already a fence in a large part. Some people may not know this, right? Because the way Trump portrays it is like, like it's this big open road that you can just go across but there's a huge fucking fence in the majority of the border <laughs> like there's those airport things like you know when you're in an airport and you can yeah. you can walk on the moving platform so you get there faster that's what we can yeah. just get in here a little faster yeah yeah so there's huge fence right uh, all the way most of the the border is covered by the fence and um there are areas where it has to delve quite deep into the U.S. because of the way the property or like the the top up, uh, topography is. So it might be too hilly or whatever. So they just go inland a bit. And there's this like woman <coughs> who lives there, and like twelve acres of her land is beyond the fence, right? So her house is in America. And so is the rest of her land, but the mm. wall runs through it. So she has to drive three miles or two miles round 
then type in a key code to access a gate That's to odd. get to the rest of her land. Yeah, and she keeps getting into trouble for leaving out like ice and water and stuff for people who are yeah, um, running the border. See, oh, wait, I just was, oh, what was I going to say? Fuck. Oh, I mean, there's a lot of companies who hire illegal too. Like, why instead of a what? Like, well, it's not just illegal. The, the, you know, the US has a program for Mexican farm workers, for seasonal workers to come over. Like, we've had forever a revolving door with Mexicans coming in, you know, migrant labor. Um, the U.S. farm oh, yeah, industry yeah, yeah, relies totally. on That's it. been a long time, um, long, long time. Yeah, it's a revolving draw. The majority of people who come over here from Mexico That was the thing I was, stay. I just read in an article. I don't know how accurate it was, so take it with a grain of salt. But Especially there was like a farm right now, who hired the, a lot of the Americans. Economy. I want to say like 200 Americans. These aren't the correct exact numbers, but it was close. Um, and as well as some people who are here illegally, uh, the Ameri- they said the Americans, like, most of them didn't come back after a day of work. They didn't want to do that work. Yeah, they can't And it, it is, it's not fun work either. Like, that's hard labor um, working, like, you yeah. know, with crops and, and just, you know, doing all of that stuff in the sun. There are lots of farmers who will gladly tell you Americans don't keep this job. Mexicans do. Um, and, and the thing is right now is less Mexicans than ever are coming over illegally because the economy in Mexico is doing really well right a- now. Mexico isn't this weak, developing country that the oh, media they- likes to portray it at. Yes, weren't it has they- a lot of problems. Wasn't there just a big problems, issue with um, kind of- gas prices? I don't know. A lot of people were protesting in Potentially. Mexico recently. But it's certainly a yeah, lot better than Yeah, and that's another been. reason why I think the wall is like, sort of a mistake is that it's been going down how many people are coming here so it's like uh, we're already on the way back yeah. down like can we just deal with this a different You're way 20 years too late buddy it's certainly going to be like a bumpy ride for the next few weeks i don't know which way trump's going to go in a lot of places and i don't even think his cabinet knows which way trump's going to go in a lot of issues um it seems like they're certainly going to be clamping down on cannabis on see, anything that doesn't I mean, conform man, they said they were going to do that but they it, it makes them look so stupid when they keep saying oh states rights states rights even about marijuana they said states rights states rights before i mean if they want to shoot themselves in the foot because i know a lot of trump supporters that if they even fuck with weed those people are gonna be like nah i'm done fuck you it's too late he hasn't he's done anything in, yet though like, he's in i just no, I, well, I just do don't I. trust the guy. He says he's going to do multiple things. I mean, look what he did with taxes. I'm going to cut all the taxes for lower income. Oh, lol, just kidding. I'm going to raise yours and cut everyone well, else's. No, because now isn't it you sign a thing yeah. that says I'm, I win if you make under 40K a, a year? You don't, huh? He wanted to make a form. He wanted to simple, simplify the tax forms. And if you made under 40K a year, he wanted you to send in a form where you check off I win, and that was it. You don't pay taxes. Okay, but the plan that was released was a 3% increase. Well, for, increase so, for, well, for some income. lower income. It was like, I think, between 12K and 15K. I have to And then there was another now. one that rose that was a little higher. Maybe it was like 60K to 75K, something like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm The most recent thing was the I win page. No, there's nothing that... Oh, hang on. Yeah, these are all old. All that shit is old. Nothing's updated. Yeah, I think new that. tax thing was going to be this year, obviously. Um, too late to do his plan for 2016. Huh. Yeah, no, the last thing I had heard him say about it was, like, if you pay. No, yeah, that, now would, that be would be great. Cool. That, that would be really fucking smart. And that would be awesome for people. And I would 100, I would be behind that. I would be putting my tax money into an HSA account while they fuck up their health policies. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, we've got lots to research, man. It's funny how, like, sometimes we think we've come in prepared and then we learn new things or we're not sure about well, things. Well, I think, yeah, and a big issue, <laughs> again, is that 
they say a bunch of different things a lot. <laughs> like like with marijuana. Like they and said, oh, we're themselves. not going to fuck with it. Whatever states' rights. And then now they're like, oh, well, federally, actually. But the states can choose. The states can it's still scary. choose. But federally, it's illegal, so. Yeah, and I want to make this clear to people. They've said they're not coming after medical. This is purely recreational. But if you're in... A situation uh, like me, who's in Georgia, has very, very strict medical laws. My conditions aren't listed either or any of them. Uh, you know, I've got three somewhat painful conditions and, and right. none of them are listed on there. So I can't benefit from that. So uh, I'm yeah, kind of even stuck. Like, like Illinois, we have medical marijuana. Um, there's really only so many conditions on there and they're all very serious. Uh, but even to get that medical marijuana, like, you have to know oil, a doctor though. for a year. Uh, so, I mean, if you have a doctor you've been seeing, then, again, it, they really pushed it towards only people with serious, serious issues. When there's so many other issues that could be covered. Yeah, here too, it's an oil. That would still help people. Yeah. Yeah, here, here you can only have an oil and there's nowhere to buy it. There's no doctors. Uh, you have to break federal law to get it. Actually, one of the local congressmen stood up and said, I have broken federal law by getting oil for families and my, for you know, of my I'm constituents. Like saying that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously he wasn't arrested, but uh, yeah, you have to breach federal drug yeah, trafficking laws mess. to yeah. Bring cannabis oil for your epileptic child. Or it's like it's great. those states where I think, well, I don't know this isn't a state, but in Washington, D.C., recreational is legal now, but you have to gift it. All right. Credit to Ireland, by the way. I read the story the other day. Uh, a mother and her 10 year old son, uh, he had some kind of seizure disorder, uh, flown out to California or Colorado to get some oil and flown back to Ireland with it. When she landed and customs, you know, ask, have you got anything to declare? She flat out told them, I've got cannabis off my son. And That's they really waved awesome. her through. She's lucky, though, like, <laughs> that really they did awesome. it, right? I don't know how Iron Law is. Yeah, yeah. In regards to cannabis. Um, but to be honest, like, if I was a border agent and I saw a mom with a sick kid and she'd just flown in from the U.S. with cannabis oil i'd be, I'd like, be like get her boys go. we got one <laughs> take that kid away <laughs> that's because you're an asshole let him shake in the corner oh, oh god fuck no i wouldn't do that i would let her go i was joking you are i'm horrible, sorry i was horrible joking. horrible woman i feel so bad for the kids my god we should get those witches i get to make so fucking angry you. every time i see a story where kids fucking needlessly suffering because they can't get cbd oil it yeah, doesn't even make them plant. high. The like, the like medication for these issues, no, just I mean, the legal ones, I should say, aren't working. Oh, I can't, whatever we've talked about, it. I get so angry. Uh, no jail time for nineteen-year-old Idaho. I don't know about this assault case. So a nineteen-year-old, so a nineteen-year-old uh, guy, uh, white, uh, is accused of kicking a coat hanger up the rectum of a mentally ill or mentally disabled black teammate. What the fuck? Now, so a couple, couple of other people were charged in this, but none of them have been given jail time. Uh, he pled guilty to felony injury of a child. Now, he had originally been charged with sexual assault, but prosecutors decided that while they were confident they could prove Howard kicked the coat hanger into his teammate's rectum, the act did not constitute a sex crime. Wow, that's really fucked up. So shoving something up someone's ass does not constitute a sex crime. I would like to ask Judge Randy Stoker, what the fuck shoving something up an ass is if it's not How? a sex crime? Like, this is stupid. I don't want anyone I mean, who's think fucking of shoving coat hangers, kicking coat hangers up someone's ass. He kicked it? How is that not like a fuck? That's horrible. And the fact that... And, the, you know, the fact that this is a disabled guy who has been attacked, in a lot of states, that would count as a hate crime as well, right? Because you're picking on someone, you're attacking someone who is less able to defend yeah. themselves than an average human being. 
And this guy is getting off with probation. No, I don't. I, I like violent crimes do some time <laughs> to me. Yeah, I mean, if it was a kid with a joint, he'd be in jail. But this kid has attacked and, in my mind, raped, right? If you've kicked any object into any hole in a body, in my mind, you have raped yeah, somebody. That's. Apart from the ear hole, like what would you say? Unless you kick a fucking hanger up there. But you have um, kicked a coat hanger up someone's ass. In my mind, yeah, no, that is fuck rape. anyone who would ever do that. That is penetration. Like, what that was his rape. mindset going into this? That there's no jail time. Oh, it's just a prank, bro. Like, I don't understand how you kick a hanger into this someone's is- asshole. I don't understand how you do that without thinking, oh, this is probably not something I should fucking do before you get to the point where you're kicking a fucking coat hanger up someone's asshole. And what's worse is it seemed like, um, so this is the, the quote. The young man said that one of his friends motioned for him to come over. He hugged him while another player shoved a hanger into his anus. Then the victim said Howard kicked the hanger to oh, push it further up inside him. So he was like tricked into thinking it was something nice. And Wait, then so where was this? So to <clears throat> me, um, okay. Idaho. Wait, you said that it was a football player? Like where were they? Just um, How his defense attorney didn't deny that the incident occurred. Instead, he argued that the football star kicked at his black teammate while the hanger was between his buttocks but did not intentionally kick the hanger itself so yes football player there's unfortunately a lot of instances of football players doing really fucked up shit the victim has also testified that howard repeat howard repeatedly called him the n-word and taught him a kkk glorifying song that called for the lynching of black people and the other members of the football team called him fried chicken, watermelon, Kool-Aid, Fuck and these grape kids. Soda. They should not be allowed on so, that fucking team anymore. This well, is, they can't. They're 19, whatever. This is racial, racially motivated attacks, hate crime based on race and disability, rape and assault, or sexual assault at least. Um, and these guys are getting... <laughs> Uh, you know, felony charges, sure, but there, there's no jail time. There's no fucking jail Go time. They're 19. On your record, like, these aren't, cunts. these aren't thir- 13-year-old boys making stupid, horrible errors in judgment. These that's are grown-ass stupid. men. That's disgusting. Like, just all that background information. It's just, even if you don't even take into consideration that, you st- you don't just accidentally kick a fucking hanger into someone's fucking asshole you don't do that for like shits and giggles like well they did but they're fucked up oh that's really fucked up so they got a sentence towered to community service and i'm sure he'll probation. learn his lesson and the judge was emphatic that the assault did not constitute rape but how is that not a hate crime too like How's it? How's it not anything? How's it not a hate crime? How's it not? I mean, sexual assault. At the very least, if it's not rape, is it's there sexual assault. The arguments right? that they weren't How's doing it, it? In a, like to be like in a sexual way, like that wasn't their point. It was more to attack him. I don't care if something's no. I know. I, I don't disagree, but I feel like that's how they're seeing it. But at the same time, like that doesn't. Everything about this is stupid. There are There's some no way that shouldn't should be fucking, fucking community service and probation. Now, I didn't research this to find out if it was real. It's on NPR. I hope it's not real, but NPR doesn't tend to publish fake no. articles. Although I think they were banned on Trump's <laughs> list, so cuz you know Trump's been banning certain press agencies. All right, the yeah. All press media media. fucking panders to their own side and make sure yeah this is this is truly sad and in this article there are quotes from the victim and it's clear the victim understood how bad this was it was happening to him you know he wasn't you know severely he he does a civil case against Um, that kid and get some money good his parents are his parents are gonna do a civil but i feel for them because you know this poor kid has to relive yeah it's horrible it's a it's a big reason why like 
you know, you always see people like, oh, well, they should have reported they were raped to the police. There's a lot of issues that go into that. One, they're not believed. Two, um, they feel shameful. There's so many different things. Um, yeah. Yeah. But also the reliving of it when you go to like when you go to trial, you would have to relive through that and talk about it and be questioned in a hostile manner by opposing yeah. counsel. So not only do you have to relive that, you have to get attacked on your word yeah, by opposing a, counsel. It's, that's a terrifying situation. The system is not set up for those who have been victims of any traumatic event, mm -hmm. sexual or otherwise. So, yeah, and I note, guess on that note, happy, oh, happy, lovely. joy, joy. Jesus Christ. We should call it a night. Yeah. I promise happier topics next I week, guys, I as long as Trump guys, hasn't started a war. But I don't. Um, I know one. Knock, knock. Who's there? 